yesterday, so make sure you guys check out that video if you want a little bit of extra content I did post last night. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into tonight's video. Video, 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 video. Alright everyone, so obviously when talking about the all NBA teams, basically it is just selecting the top players from this current year. Um, I'm going to put a big ol' uh, red flag on this video. These are just my predictions. This isn't, you know, who I want, who I think. These are me. This is me predicting who I think is going to be making the squad. So, obviously, I might talk about I think this player should make it or this player or this player. But, you know, I'm just saying it's, it's me predicting who I think is actually going to win, not who I want to win, if that makes any sense. And also... My opinion means absolutely nothing. My opinion is dumb, is stupid, it's wrong. So keep that in mind. I do not get paid big bucks. I do not have a vote in this. It doesn't affect the players or any way, shape, or form if I leave them on or off the list. Again, keep that in mind. I think we are going to start from the first team to the third team just because I think every year everyone already has a sense on is going to be the sort of top players of the NBA for that year. And I think for this year, it's pretty obvious for the first couple picks who they are. And then obviously in the second team, the third team, that's where it gets really controversial, I guess you could say. With the All-NBA first team, I know I'm kind of cutting to the end of it, but I think it's more interesting this way. Um, I think there is obviously some for sure players. So my first for sure player is Noda. is probably the front runner for MVP this year. Uh, Nikola Jokic obviously starting off on the Denver Nuggets having a very struggling year um, and now being in the fourth seed it is so crazy how fast of a change up this, this, this whole entire team has had. Uh, right now he is 11th. He is 11th nearly top 10 in scoring at 26 points per game. 11 rebounds and nearly 9 assists a game as well. And get this, out of a 72 game year, he played 68 games. Chef kiss, and that is going to be the biggest factor going into this year. This year has been riddled and just overrun with injury and players missing time due to health and safety protocols, things like that. That is going to be a matter and subject when going into these so again some players might miss this listing because they just haven't played enough games but for Jokic he played more than enough for sure so the way he just carried that team from where they were at from you know I think at one point they were like a ninth tenth seed at the beginning of the year first couple months to now being having home court advantage I think it's totally crazy the flip they had especially now without having Jamal Murray still carrying a positive record without having Jamal Murray uh, and the Nuggets just having a great sort of team built around uh, Nikola Jokic that he has to be all NBA first team he's going to probably win MVP um, absolutely animal this year Jokic I think is 100% safe on making the first team another player I think is no duh uh, the absolutely crazy year Steph Curry has had and just showing everyone that you know he does need help. Obviously, he is the best player on that team, but he still needs some help to get things done. But even Steph by himself on a pretty lackluster squad, even with Draymond, 
it's, it's just a, a, a totally different team with Steph on the court. I think he's obviously meaning a whole lot to that team, but also just the way he plays individually is amazing. Of course, he is all NBA first team. next player. So basically, I should have said this in the earlier uh, part. You get two backcourt players and three frontcourt players. It used to be two guards, uh, two forwards, and a center. Now it's just two guards and three forwards or three frontcourt players. Uh, so you can pick, you know, three forwards if you want or two centers and a forward just to keep you guys, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the loop of things. Um, my next player, another pretty obvious one. I think Giannis is a pretty obvious one for all NBA first team. Dude is averaging 28 points per game, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. Absolutely insane. Only playing 33 minutes a game as well. I think that might be a career low for him. Uh, at least the start of his sort of MVP sort of caliber uh, years in the league. Also, get this, shooting 31% from three, which isn't bad for Giannis. Also averaging up over a block and over a steal. Still one of the best defenders in the league. Still uh, arguably an MVP candidate as well. Really flying under the radar this year. And even that entire Milwaukee Bucks team is, which is good. I think this is going to really favor the Bucks, uh, making their playoff run for sure. And I think he's just a, a, a given for all NBA first team. I think not a lot of people have been talking about him which is good. I think he's starting to finally find his place and his own in the league. And hopefully he doesn't get the sort of, I don't know, spotlight shined on him that he probably doesn't really want to. So uh, I think Giannis, all NBA first team, is a gimme. These next players are a little bit harder, at least in my opinion, the next guard and forward spots. Um, and again, just me personally, who I think is going to win it. I think, personally, after the all-star break is really making a great case for all NBA first team and we all know everyone remembers the second half of the, of the year not really the first half and definitely not only the Luka by himself but the Dallas Mavericks as a whole making an amazing push from again a ninth-ish seeded team to now being a top five seed in the NBA Western conferences absolutely insane which is really cool to see so I think Luka Doncic for sure, who is also averaging 28 points per game, 8 rebounds, 9 assists, playing, again, 62 games out of a 72-game year, not entirely done with the year as well, so he's going to add those up a little bit, which is really good for his case. Um, let's see, a 30 efficiency player rating as well, which is super crazy, 35% from 3, which isn't bad. Um, I, I definitely, going into the league, I thought Luka was going to have a crazy, you know, MVP style of year. I thought Rick Kyle was going to win coach of the year, things like that. Um, they definitely did have a topsy-turvy start of the year, including Luka as well, but once the team got healthy, Luka finally got his legs under him. I think once the team started to get going, you saw and are seeing what they could have been at the start of the year, which is a really good team, so um, I think I think it's for sure. I think Luka gets all NBA first team, and the last forward spot. So right now I have Steph, Luka, I have Giannis, and, and uh, Jokic at the last forward spot. It's very tough. And I wish I could talk about other players I could put on this first spot, but then I'd be spoiling, you know, the rest of my list. But <sighs> I'm going to go with a player who's also been under the radar, who's been on arguably one of the best teams in the NBA and are definitely going to be playoff ready teams that are, again, flying a little bit under the radar to all these other big, surprising NBA 
especially at the forward position. I think Kawhi takes the cake, at least in my opinion, I think he's going to win. So, all NBA first team, Steph, Luka, Kawhi, Giannis, and Jokic. Not bad. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty good all NBA first team. Um, now on to the second team where things get very controversial. Um, again, I will be making my safe picks first, I guess you could say. Um, let's see. I have them written down on my phone. Okay. I'm going to go with a, another MVP candidate player who definitely probably would have won it if he just, again, could have stayed healthy. And that is Joel Embiid at the first spot. Uh, who's averaging 29 points per game and 11 rebounds. My God. But only playing 49 games can be finishing up barely above 50 games, which, again, Kawhi finishing barely above 50 games as well, uh, but Kawhi isn't an MVP candidate. I think Joel Embiid, if he would have played like 60-ish games, maybe in the higher 50s, he would have gotten more of a case, but he did miss a big chunk uh, of the of the season, and Jokic barely missing any games. I think he sort of had to give him, uh, give him the sort of run for it. I think, I think actually Jokic hasn't missed any games, if I can remember right. Um, it's just the season isn't done yet. That's why it's not sort of updated. My next kind of for sure pick, uh, I gotta go with Damian Lillard. I think Lillard, um, definitely at the beginning, you know, halfway through the year, definitely had a case for all NBA first team, had a great run for sort of MVP conversation, but, um, you know, the Blazers slid pretty, pretty far, pretty fast. They were, you know, a top four, top three seed in the NBA for a little bit, well, at the West for a little bit. Then, you know, things started to get kind of bad, and then Dame got hurt, and then things got worse, and then Blazers lost, like, like nine out of their last ten games at one point or something crazy like that. Uh, now they're battling to try to get out of the play-in situation, so um, I don't think he really has a case for first team anymore, but second team, no doubt about it, stamp it in the books. Um, still having an amazing year by himself, averaging 28.6 points per game in eight assist my god playing 63 games out of the year um that's also crazy F uh, 40 percent from three 45 percent from the field 93 percent from the free throw line a better free throw percentage than steph curry keep that in mind uh but yeah i think uh, for sure dame deserves this for sure uh the players had had a crazy injury ridden season season two you know yusuf was injured again cj was injured for a long time uh they traded away one of their sort of young aspiring players uh we still have our starting power forward injured okay now some of the more controversial picks i think um this is who i think is going to make the squads and me personally i think that a lot of Chris Paul the nod for all NBA second team. Um, Chris Paul averaging 16 points per game, nearly nine assists a game, and five rebounds. You know, I do think the Phoenix Suns, even without a Chris Paul player, still probably would have been in like a Spurs or, or Memphis Grizzly situation right now, sort of in the play and run. But with Chris Paul, that team, you know, could have the best seed. Uh, best seed, yeah, well, yeah, the best seed in the entire Western Conference uh, at the end of the year, which is so crazy to think about how one player could impact a franchise that crazy, and Chris Paul is doing that in Phoenix for sure, and I think he definitely deserves an All-NBA spot, All-NBA second team. I don't know, that may be kind of kind of high, but again, this team just took a team that was like a, like a ninth-seeded team to a one-seeded team in the Western Conference, which is absolutely insane. Obviously, the, the development of, of Devin Booker and David, uh, David and DeAndre Ayton did a whole lot of that, and also with the coaching of Monty Williams, who was probably going to win Coach of the Year. Then, I have two more forward spots, and one of them is going to make it because <laughs> this New York Knicks team is such a popular team in the NBA right now. I think there's no doubt that they probably will get Julius Randle on an All-NBA team. And 
quite honestly, if you're talking about forwards who have played a lot of games and have made humongous impacts on their squad, Julius Randle may take the cake, averaging 24 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists. The dude's looking pretty good. <laughs> and if you're asking me, he's played so far 67 games this year, which again, not a lot of other forwards in the NBA can talk like that. Obviously with Kawhi, we were just talking about barely going to play 50. Um, he's averaging 46% from the field, a 41% for three throw, three point shooter, which is totally crazy. Um, defensively, you know, that's where a lot of people sort of shrug away from, but he's definitely better than previous years, I guess I could say. Um, and quite honestly, it, it, the Knicks are a four seed in the NBA playoffs right now, and he is definitely maybe not the number one reason. The number one reason is that that team's really playing together, playing a lot of good team ball a lot of the time, and their defense is really good uh, because they are playing together as a team. And when you're making an all-NBA team, it's not, you know, who's the best player. It's who's having the best year, who's having a really good year this year. And if you're talking about the year of 2020, 2021, you can't talk about the year without talking about the New York Knicks and Julius Randle, at least in my opinion. So I think he gets the nod. Um, then with my last, last, last pick for All-NBA second team, um, a very controversial one because this guy has been injured a whole lot, but you cannot deny the greatness and impact he has for the game. And that is LeBron James. I think LeBron, even with only playing 43 games as of right now probably going to finish the year below 50 games we'll still be able to make an all NBA team an all NBA second team to be exact averaging 25 points per game 8 rebounds 8 assists oh my goodness a player efficiency rating of 28 which is above players like Kawhi and uh, Jason Tatum players like Kevin Durant Luka Doncic he has nearly better or just as good as some of those other players, but again, just being hurt a whole lot. Averaging over 50% from the field, 37% from the three-point line. Like, he was having nearly an MVP caliber year, and we all know when the Lakers were healthy, they were a three-seed in the NBA. Just got very unlucky, had a very bad time, and, you know, as of right now, they are in the play-in game situation, which sucks, but... We all have seen Anthony Davis bounce back. He's averaging in the past two games like 40 points, which is so crazy. And then when LeBron gets back, I think they will be fine. But we're going to have to see, you know, how well and how under the legs LeBron is. So that's kind of terrifying to think about if you are a Lakers NBA second team. I got Dame, well, Chris Paul, Dame, uh, LeBron, Randall, and Joel Embiid, all NBA second team. So now I'm on to the All-NBA third team, which even gets more controversial because these are the last sort of pickings to make a team, and it's very hair-thin on players to, to vote for and not vote for and things like that. So again, very controversial, but um, I do have maybe two gimme players for this one. Um, I think my first gimme player is Kyrie Irving. And I know that might be a little bit iffy. Um, obviously, you know, the entire the entire Brooklyn Nets team, um, obviously riddled with injury. Obviously a very gifted team, so they can sit, you know, two of their big three and still win games. But I think Kyrie Irving just had an amazing year, and the Brooklyn Nets are still one of the top teams in the NBA, so I think they do deserve at least one um, all-NBA caliber player. Then next, maybe controversial. Uh, I know a lot of people probably will put two guards and three forwards for this one, but I'm going to be putting a center for my last spot. And I think, obviously, you know, when you think of the top three centers in the NBA, you kind of have to go with Rudy Gobert as the third best center. Uh, obviously, defensively, he's probably number one, but, you know, defense isn't the, the nicest thing in nowadays NBA, but this year he's averaging... Uh, 13 points, which, oops, sorry, he's averaging 14 points, 13 rebounds, which, God, that's totally insane, playing 67 uh, games this year, which is very nice as well, and averaging nearly three uh, blocks a game, which is awesome.
And honestly, you know, the Utah Jazz um, are a great team, and we've always known that for years and years and years they've been a playoff team, but this year they definitely have overcome a lot of things and have, you know, become one of the, the top teams winning-wise in the NBA. Now, is that a fluke? We will see, because as an eight seed facing a one seed right now, if they do keep that one seed at spots, they're going to have to go up against, you know, a Laker team maybe, a, a you know, a battle-tested Golden State Warriors team, or a super-duper hungry Memphis Grizzlies team. Can they survive this? Next player uh, definitely had, I think, almost a historic year for sure, if I can remember right. But if not, he still had an amazing year, just on a very struggling team. And Zion Williamson is that guy. Zion Williamson averaged 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists this year, playing 61 games. I think he broke his finger, I think, uh, at the end of the year and is out for the rest of the year, which is kind of sucky. And again, that I almost wanted to leave him off the list, but on my list, I don't maybe think he even makes it because the Pelicans were just such a un an undeserving team this year. They just they, they could have been so much better. They should have been in the playing game situation. They should have been like an eighth, ninth seed, but they just couldn't get it done and I don't know why. Is it coaching? Is it players? I don't know, but they really need to figure it out because that team is way too talented to be, you know, a, a, an eleventh, twelfth seed. It's disgusting, at least in my opinion. Next up, um, this is going to hurt me a lot, <laughs> but um, uh, it's going to be a forward, but I think with a player only playing, get this, 31 games, as of right now, he's probably going to finish for like 35 games. I'm going to, I'm going to take Kevin Durant, I think. Even with missing nearly half the year, probably more than half the year, um, KD will probably still find his way onto an NBA All NBA team because the dude in barely 30 minutes a game, averaging 28 points, seven and five. The dude a couple nights ago scored 40 points. Like he is still such an amazing player when he plays. Sure, has he been hurt a lot? Yes, but has he shown up to the games he has played? Absolutely, and probably, again, if he was healthy the entire year, could have probably won an MVP, at least been like a top three candidate for sure. Um, he also averaged 54% from the field, 47% from three, 88% from the line. Uh, defense still immaculate, almost averaging over a steal and a block a game like like when Katie plays, he looks like a normal Kevin Durant player. I still think he's trying to find himself a little bit more, and he's still kind of struggling. But these numbers are Katie when struggling. Like, I, if he's not on an All NBA team, I will totally understand that. But in my opinion, I think he will still find a way onto a team for sure. My last card spot, I'm giving it up to Devin. Booker, I think Devin Booker um, being sort of snubbed in the All-Star game then making an All-Star game. I think a lot of media members and things like that, people who could vote, are really going to remember that and sort of get that sort of nudge to Devin Booker in that crazy uh, Phoenix Suns team. So I say he makes an All-NBA team. He's average this year, 25.5 points per game and nearly five assists as well, playing 64 games, which in my opinion really puts him over the top against a lot of other guards that we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about some snubs and stuff here in a little bit, um, but really puts him over the top, at least in my opinion, the number of games he's played this year, I think also sort of carries a little bit of weight in that conversation, um, averaging nearly 50% from the field, 34% from three, 86% from the free throw line. You know, obviously a lot of props to Chris Paul on what he did to the Phoenix Suns, 
this weight even playing alongside an all-time great Chris Paul and I think due to the number of games he played he's gonna get the nudge over a lot of other players so with that being said my all-nba third team is Kyrie Booker Durant Zion and Rudy Gobert so those are my teams <laughs> uh, we can talk about some of the snubs um, I think obviously the first one that comes to my head is James Harden. Why not James Harden? James Harden played this year 42 games, which I know is, you know, nearly 10 more than Kevin Durant. But, you know, at the start of the year, he played on Houston, which would you even really count those Houston Rocket games that it was just really him just playing around until he actually got traded to a contender. I think that sort of has to take some sort of form into it. And then, again, was hurt for a lot of the year. But, again, like Kevin Durant, if he was not injured, he probably would have won or been a top three candidate for MVP. And uh, we saw that for sure. But I just don't know if I can give him the nod again over players who have just played more than him, shown more than him for more games. Um, and that one is one that Again, this is a me predicting who will win, not me and my own list. If it was my own list, I think I'd put James Harden on it, but I, it's just this is just me predicting who I think is going to win. Uh, and I just don't think he played enough games for voters to vote for him, if that makes any sense. Um, other players, um, Bradley Beal, Russell Westbrook just really, really struggled for not only the first half of the year, but for a majority of the year till about the last couple weeks and now they're sort of back into that sort of playoff form that a lot of people uh, in the East are maybe terrified to play in the playoffs uh, but still I just don't think had enough oomph at the beginning of the year um, Donovan Mitchell uh, if you want to put Donovan Mitchell over uh, Devin Booker I think that's totally okay um, Jason Tatum sure Jason Tatum has the numbers sort of like a Bradley Beal type of player or Russell Westbrook type of player but when it comes to winning games the, the Boston Celtics just really struggled this year and again on my list I think I would actually put him on a team but it's 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 just very really tough to see that Boston Celtics team lose as much as they do when having such good talent it doesn't make any sense. Just did him average this year 26, 7, and 4, playing 61 games. Like, he's really good. It's just, I don't know why they aren't winning. And I'm not saying I'm blaming on Jason Tatum, but it's really sucky when you'll have a really good stretch and then a couple of games of where is Jason Tatum. But yeah, I think that's mostly it. <laughs> I think that is okay. I think those are my picks. So again, very quickly, it's all in First team, we got Steph, Luka, Kawhi, Giannis, Jokic. Second team, we have Dame, Chris Paul, LeBron, Randall, and Embiid. And third team, we have Kyrie, Booker, Durant, Zion, and Rudy Gobert. I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's very controversial. But again, this is just my predictions on who I think is going to win. Not my own little listing, I guess you could say. So... With that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you put down your own team or teams if you want to. All NBA first team would be nice as well. Uh, I might be doing a predictions team, uh, predictions team, a predictions list for uh, the NBA awards, like MVP and stuff like that. I may do that uh, at some point in time. But yeah, the year is starting to uh, finish up, and I'm very excited. I'm so excited to do a playoff predictions video as well. So look out for that one. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. So make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you again in my next video.